Newspapers.com has over 11,000 newspapers beginning as early as the 1700s and coming to the 2000s. Oh my goodness. Have you started researching on Newspapers.com? Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we love teaching you how to do family history for yourself and have a whole lot of fun along the way. Newspapers are a definitely fun resource. You never know what you're going to find. You just have to start searching. Gosh, is that somebody's slogan? Oops. But there are some challenges with newspapers, and that is that computers are scanning and indexing newspapers and putting this information into your searchable form. Even with the limitations of this OCR technology, newspapers are still pretty fun. Now, if you want to see the different types of cool things that you can find in a newspaper, be sure to check out this video. Yes, it talks about researching around the 1890s census, but it really is applicable to just about any time period where a newspaper exists in the area your ancestors lived. So let's talk about newspapers.com. How are we going to search that resource? Now, newspapers.com has a lot of newspapers for Cincinnati, Ohio, where my Townley ancestors live. So if I type in Richard Townley, let's go ahead and see what shows up. And I'm going to go ahead and put on my glasses so we can get through this quickly. So here we see that I have a lot of hints, over 1,683 hints of possible newspaper items for Richard Townley. But I know that he lived in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I can come over here and click on the Ohio icon. And now we're down to 4,000 matches. That's not too bad. But I know... Um, he did not live in 1840 there, and I know he died before 1950. So I can either use my sliders or I can type in dates here to narrow down my search results and click update. Now I'm down to 1,832 matches. Not too bad. But like I said, he's from... Cincinnati, Ohio. So if I go to show advanced, I can type in the place. Cincin, and we're gonna find out if I can spell Cincinnati, Ohio. Here's something you have to pay attention to. If you start typing in a location and the the place doesn't come up, you're not gonna be able to search that place. It has happened for a number of the places that I'm researching and you're just going to have to go to something broader. So if I narrow down to Cincinnati, Ohio, now I have 1,021 matches, and I can quickly go through and click on some of these articles to see if it pertains to my family. Notice what happened. I clicked on this article, and newspapers.com will take me to the clipping. I didn't have to go hunt for it. It took me right there and it's almost perfectly zoomed up. If I want to zoom in even further, I can click on these plus buttons and I can start um, looking at this article. The Townley Heirs, a vast estate in England, which will probably fall to some American. Ooh, doesn't that sound juicy? Too bad, it's not my Townleys. That's frustrating. Now, one quick cool thing that newspapers.com does is, you see this blue little box? We can see that it was clipped by this person. And if there were any notes that this person added, they'd be right here. And in this case, this blue box, oh, lo and behold, it was found by me and I didn't put any. Um, details, but I did give it a little title, the Townley Estate Issue. So you never really understand why people name things the way they do, but you can see who was adding things, um, clipping things in this newspaper article that, um, that you're looking at and remind yourself what you have found. Now, some of the problems with newspapers.com is that I can't combine things, anything more than 
a place, a time frame. I can't put in an occupation, but I can't really put in an occupation in a person's name. It doesn't work that well. It actually works better over on Chronicling America than newspapers.com. So I can't necessarily put in uh, Richard Townley and his occupation as policeman and have some results come up. The other thing is Richard Townley. If it doesn't say Richard Townley, it's not going to come up. So I'm gonna have to throw in a lot of variations for Richard, R-I-C apostrophe D Townley. Um, if I don't know that that is going to be an abbreviation for Richard, then I'm going to have to just take off that first name and then go through all the Townleys in Cincinnati. And you know what, that's really not a bad tip. And the reason why I say that is, I found a lot of great articles by just searching for the surname in the location I'm researching. One negative thing, if your ancestor happens to have a last name like Meadows or Park or Young, that's not gonna work because it's going to pick up the meadow of a playing field, the park in the middle of this city. It's not gonna recognize that that word park is a last name versus just the word, the generic park and that people go play at. So you're gonna have to try some other strategies other than just a surname search. Now, one thing I did discover was for Dick Townley. And this is a super cool find that I'll leave you with. Whenever you clip a file to a newspaper like I did in that previous article, when you have your search results, you're going to see your clipping right here in your results. When I go through, I can see that Richard Dick Townley was stabbed in his line of duty as a police officer. For what it's worth, I didn't know that his nickname was ever Dick's, but by doing that surname search, I found this article about my ancestor, Richard Townley, who was a sergeant in the police force in Cincinnati. So that was pretty cool. And when I say you never know what you're going to find, I didn't really realize that he got stabbed in the line of duty and just how that stabbing actually could have been fatal, but thankfully in this case it wasn't as the article said. So go ahead and try out your newspaper clippy uh, newspapers.com and see what you're gonna find on your family. Let's say you finally discover a record for your ancestor that you haven't clipped before, that you're clipping it for the first time. What you're doing to save that article is creating a clipping. So what you can do is click these scissor icons right here. Click the scissors and then come over to the article that you want to clip. And you notice if you hold down your left mouse button over these boxes, you can resize that clipping. You can give it a title, Catherine Townley Funeral um, Article, and then click OK. Now, once you've clipped that file, you have a lot of options. You can send it over to Ancestry, which we will show in a later video. You can save it to your computer, you can email it, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, or then get an embeddable link if you wanna put it into a blog post. Pretty handy way to help you take your clippings that you do find and share them, share them, share them. So that was a brief introduction into newspapers.com. I'm going to create another video that tells to you about how to transfer your clippings from newspapers.com over to ancestry.com. But if you have other questions about newspapers.com, please put them in the comments below because that will help me know what video to do about newspapers.com next.